I'm Luke with Out of Darts. Today we are checking out a very cool 3D printed blaster. This is the Concept Pistol from Devil Z Nerf Works. And uh, why check out one when you can check out two? And why check out two when you can check out four? Let's have a warehouse battle. Earlier this year, Devil Z Nerfworks released this compact flywheel the world powered micro flywheel sidearm blaster. I guess you could call it a sidearm, but it could be probably rerun as a primary fairly easily. These blasters were all sent to me by Scott over at Alpaca Blasters, and he will be selling these as fully assembled, ready to fire blasters. We'll have all of the information down below in the description, as well as links to his shop. So thank you, Scott, for sending these. These are very, very fun, and uh, we had a really good time with them around the warehouse. Compared to a lot of other sidearms, this blaster is definitely tuned for 3D printing. Uh, it's very elegantly designed, it has a nice assembly process, and it doesn't have a lot of hardware. And when you open it up, it's almost shocking inside to see how little is there. There's essentially two motors, there are no springs, there's minimal hardware to just hold the blaster together, and there's tiny little itty bitty run of wire to your XT60 and to your battery. There's really not much else inside there going on. He used a custom board up top, a little PCB that makes soldering these really, really easy. These files are available for free online or a suggested donation to the original creator. If someone's putting out free 3D files and you find a lot of value in it, it is really a nice idea to kick them back a few bucks to help them out uh, with the development process. That said, let's get right into the blaster. This blaster is a Talon Magwell. It is a standard Talon, not an angled Talon. However, the Magwell itself is angled to complement the grip shape. The performance is quite good for what the blaster is. You can get up to 100 FPS in our testing. We're somewhere in the low to mid 90s. Uh, and these specific blasters have Krakens, and again, it's a micro flywheel blaster. So the performance of a lot of these micro flywheel blasters is going to be pretty comparable. Uh, but it fills a really nice niche and that's a nice, you know, semi-automatic flywheel, just aim and fire. It'll pretty much fire as fast as you want to fire and the trigger pull is very snappy and responsive. It is a standard two-stage mechanical slash electronic trigger, meaning that when you pull the fire trigger partway, you are revving up the motors and then the mechanical pusher arm is pushing the dart into the flywheels. This is all done with a single trigger pull, as you can see here. Hey, I'm out of darts again. Uh, here we've got the Tachi Mag, which so far it looks like the Tachi Mag is okay. Uh, Scott did warn me that he's had some issues with Tachi and he's trying to remedy that and figure out exactly what's happening. Uh, thought it might be the gap between here, but Tachi is actually larger, which is why Tachi Mags work with the Mark III. So we're a little confused, but it seems to work fine in, in initial testing. But what I suspect is happening, there's a little jam, I think that's it's actually colliding with the pusher arm. So Scott's working on trying to fix that and make sure that they are compatible with more magazine options because personally I think that just looks awesome. I mean, <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm gonna have a blast out of the, with this at uh, the next CQB game, I think. So the initial blaster that was released by Devil Z Nerfworks is put up online and Scott has made a bunch of different little changes to the blaster. Some of them are, I believe are fit and tolerance and, and finish. He added a muzzle up front so you can actually interchange this and add or change different colors. So if you're playing in a private field, you can have whatever color you want. And if you're playing publicly, then you can have a nice bright orange muzzle. He also added these top rail sights and the ability to add a Picatinny rail up top if that's something you want to have. Uh, since this blaster does have a sort of uh, 
action on top. I would say you probably don't want to actually mount a sight or anything up there because it's additional weight that you are uh, ultimately going to be pulling with the trigger. Another really quality touch that Scott did add are colored screws that sort of match and accent your blaster color. I think that's just really, really uh, stellar and they are really, really pretty. Um, you know, here you can see a pink one that's got pink screws. Here we've got a blue blaster that's got uh, blue anodized aluminum screws. Pretty cool. And he said those screws are actually US made too, which is kind of neat. Each of the blasters that he sells, I believe is going to come with one of these cool stands, which is something I keep meaning to print and I never print, but just something, you know, nice little presentation of the blaster and a good way to sit and work on it. He also includes all the various muzzles that he's got available with it, along with some extra screws and an extra return spring or two. These return springs are very interesting themselves. It's a 3D printed spring, which just provides enough resistance for this slide to go front and back or back to front if you prefer. You can see this spring in the back here where it is just enough tension to resist that. And that's really cool because he's reduced the amount of hardware for international customers to find. No chasing down a specific uh, return spring and uh, you just print it and replace it. And if you break it, you print it again and it's, it's kind of cool. Not saying I think they're gonna break or anything, but it does seem like he's included uh, two extras as well with each kit, which is another nice touch. The firing mechanism is also very unique. The top slide is directly connected to the trigger. So when you're pulling the, the trigger, you're actually pulling back the top slide. In the bottom, underneath the top slide here, there are geared teeth that line up to a tooth gear that is connected to a, a lever arm pusher. So essentially, as that gear is interfacing from the slide and pushing back the the actual gear with the pusher arm, then the pusher arm swings down and pushes the dart into the flywheels. It's a neat, Clever little execution giving you, of course, both this cool dual action and easy single trigger pulls. Scott did send all of these blasters fully assembled. However, we didn't have a battery that was an XT60 ready to go. So I actually ended up swapping all of these to an XT30 to fit a 550 milliamp pack or a 450 milliamp hour pack. Uh, that's plenty of juice for a blaster like this, assuming you're using it as kind of a secondary. And uh, I would probably choose XT30 for a connector like this because there seem to be more battery options in that form factor that are already pre-wired to an XT30. Uh, Scott did say that he would have both XT30 and XT60 as an option. He just happened to have 60s around and it took me a matter of minutes to re-solder them all together due to the very simple wiring inside. Wiring this thing up is really, really simple. You install your motors and flywheels like you would normally, you attach a switch to the board, your XT60 to the board and solder the board directly onto the motors. It is a very, very simple blaster to wire up and I think that is extremely elegant and my hat's off to uh, Devil's Eat Nerfworks for coming up with such a clean clean blaster. Aesthetically, I think this is a beautiful blaster. I would definitely keep this nice bright colors. Certainly you're gonna want that orange tip if you're playing anywhere public whatsoever. Ergonomically, I think the grip is a little bit small for me. I find that my pinky kind of hits this, this here, uh, this lip, but um, you know, a competent designer could probably also pull that down for their own hand. And again, I seem to dislike a lot of grips, so. I'm starting to wonder about my own taste. <laughs> that said, uh, it's still not an uncomfortable grip. It doesn't hurt in any way. And for the purposes of being a sidearm, I definitely think it's comfortable enough to use all day long. <laughs> it's very snappy and very fun to fire. It's really a clever execution, and I think it's a very thoughtfully designed blaster. In the end, I think these are going to be a very fantastic addition to my blaster collection, and I think they are a blaster that will actually see a lot of use in gameplay. Uh, one, the only downside I can really think of is that holstering these is going to be a little bit complex because if you shove this in a normal holster, you can kind of see what happens with my hands. You're very likely to catch that. So it does seem like some sort of slide lock would be good, but a little tricky to implement in a reliable way. It would have to be some sort of maybe throw lever that locks that top slide or perhaps a master on-off switch. Kind of hard to say. But uh, at the end of the day, for a 
3D printed sidearm. I'm gonna give this five stars. I think it's very elegantly designed and I'm really impressed with the overall build quality, print quality and everything. You can find all the links to where to purchase these and where to find the files down in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these and uh, what 3D printed blaster should we check out next? Thank you so much for watching again and until next time, I'm out of darts. <laughs>